You're watching Shalom TV, celebrating Jewish culture. Funding for Shalom TV has been provided by the following. and by viewers like you. Hi, I'm Mama Dani with Shalom TV here at the URJ Biennial Conference, the Union for Reform Judaism. I'm in Washington, D.C. There are nearly 7,000 people here today, all gathering to talk about education and Israel and art and music. It's so exciting. There's so much Ruach here. I'm really interested in finding out why is everybody drawn here? What is connecting us all together? I really can't wait to meet everybody. I can't wait to find out what everybody's thinking about and talking about. Let's go meet everyone at the URJ Biennial. Why are you guys here? Uh, Biennial's awesome, first of all. Hoping to learn a little, share a little, and have a whole lot of fun. I come here for URJ and WRJ for the best programming to take back to Dallas and share with everyone there. The URJ Biennial is just a fantastic uh, program. It's the largest uh, Jewish conference in the country. It brings together all the reformed Jews from the United States and Canada. It's just a few thousand people. A few thousand Reformed Jews getting together, having a good time. Congregation Gates of Heaven from Schenectady, New York. <laughs> this is like a family reunion. I have a very good friend of him. We've come from the old Minsk, Pinsk, Prague and Hague. Vince, Vince. Vince, 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 Vince Scully. Vince, Vince Scully, Scully. From, you remember him? A Jew. Oh, we, a, Jew. Uh, a good Jew. A, Jew. a big Jew. This is community. Every two years we come together to see our friends, to see our family, to see all the people that we don't see during the year, we only talk on the phone with. We come to the Biennial to recommit ourselves to our Reformed Jewish values and reconnect with the others who feel as committed, as engaged, as involved. I'm here to do a performance on the URJ Books and Music stage. And I'm here for the Nifty Leadership Program to make a lot of friends and learn about Judaism and party. <laughs> awesome. I'm here because I love being Jewish and it's been an extraordinary experience. It's only day two and I'm just, I don't know what to go to first. I wish I could go to everything. What's your mission in the Jewish universe? Uh, well, I think definitely for the Jewish youth, it's about leadership and it's about Lador Vador, it's about generation to generation, it's about learning from the generation before us and, and preparing for the generation after us with the leadership skills, the creativity, the programming, the music. It's about getting the next generation ready. I am here with Kathy Rowland, the director of Early Childhood with the URJ, a very amazing woman and doing really cool things. So, Kathy, can you tell us what's happening in the world of early education these days? Uh, yes, it's very exciting, especially in the reform movement, where we are blessed to be the only arm of the Jewish world that supports early childhood in such a comprehensive way. We have an amazing affiliate of Jewish early childhood educators who are gathering here at the Biennial, representing early childhood and we are on the cutting edge of incorporating some of the most recent research that has come out about young families across North America and how it's impacting the future of the reform movement. Today's families, unlike families of the past, are not coming to their Jewish journeys the same way parents did five years ago. And the research shows us that we need to really look at the entire family and help them figure out where they can go on their Jewish journey, but not where we think they should be, but more where they are at their present time in life and come to them with wonderful opportunities to engage them in a non-threatening way and turn them on to Judaism for the first time, the second time, or maybe the hundredth time, we don't know, but we have new opportunities that we've never had before. have the honor of being here with two super special, special people from the amazing PJ Library. We have Harold Grinspoon, first of all, here, who is, I, I, don't, I don't even know how to put words to um, how impressed and amazed I am at your work and what you do. Can you tell everybody what you do, who you are? Um, the world needs to know. 
I'd be happy to tell you that, but I have a better spokesperson than me, Marcy Simons, who directs PJ Library. Hi, Harold is a little modest, but he is the visionary behind this amazing program, which sends free books and music into the homes of families who are raising children between six months and eight years of age. We do it in partnerships with local Jewish organizations like synagogues, federations, JCCs, and together, the uh, local organizations and communities and the Grinspoon Foundation are now sending gifts every single month to families of 90,000 children throughout North America. We're in 160 plus communities. But not to rest on his laurels, he's created a sister program in Israel called Sifriat Pijama, where there are 120,000 children receiving Hebrew language Jewish content books every month um, through their preschools. So it's we pretty have, exciting. We have a partner in Israel. The Minister of Education is our partner. And it's an amazing project there. And we think we are so privileged to be here to enhance the Jewish quality of life in America with these books showing up every month. I have to say, as a mother of two children, I received these books and they changed our nighttime life. They uh, infused beautiful Jewish culture every night for our family. So as a mother, and I'm, I'm deeply appreciative of it, as a person who performs at PJ Library events, I, I can see the ruach and the love that happens all over the country. It's very special. I want to know, when did this idea come to you? Like, where did this come from? It's, it's novel, it's amazing. What, when did you come up with this idea? Well, you'll be very surprised, believe it or not, Harold credits country western singer Dolly Parton for this program. She is the founder of a literacy program called Imagination Library, which sends books into the homes of families with young children who are disadvantaged so that they will be surrounded by literature. And Harold, through his generosity and his um, non-Jewish philanthropy, helps to support that in Springfield, Massachusetts. Then the wheels started turning, and as he thought about books going into families' homes, he said, could we do this through a Jewish lens, and could we help promote Jewish literacy? So that's why the PJ Library really came to be. PJ stands for pajamas. That's what children are wearing when they're snuggling with their parents for a great bedtime story. And now those special moments become Jewish moments. And um, as you described, it really is very, very powerful because during those intimate bedtime moments, parents are transmitting Jewish values, their Jewish heritage, identity. Children are asking questions about being Jewish, and then parents are really thinking about what it means to parent Jewishly. One more question. Why is it so important that kids connect to their Jewish souls? Like, what, what's go why is it so important? It's a great question. First of all, it's important to know that this is a book, this is a children's book project, but it's not just for kids. This is absolutely a project for families. And what the parents get out of this is as important, if not um, even more important than what the children get. I really feel like in today's challenging world, the more we can do to help families have a sense of identity, a sense of belonging to community, the more rooted they're going to be in helping to make this world a better place. And I think that that's one thing that the Jewish faith has contributed to our generations over the years. And um, the PJ Library is really helping to promote that. You have to bear in mind that PJ Library is a free project that we feel that every Jewish, every Jewish person has a right to receive these books for free. And we feel there's uh, philanthropists like myself love to put money into this project. This guy makes it like Hanukkah every single month. It's truly a blessing to get free presents in the mail for children and families. It's really a wonderful thing. Thank you so much. Thank you for this interview. So Biggest fan. Thank you. Marcy and Harold, they rock. Thank you, PJ Library. Beautiful taluses for women. I love this stuff. I'm a jewelry kind of girl, and I'm digging this. This is really cool. Yeah, we go to communities, we paint on site. Usually the rabbi suggests a pasuk, 
uh, saying, and we add it to our inventory. I just went to Yoga Shalom, and I'm bringing that back to my temple, which is Congregation Kola Me in Elkins Park, Pennsylvania, where I'm the cantorial soloist, so I'm very excited to bring that home to my temple and the music behind me and just the whole Jewish vibe. I love being Jewish. Why do people feel so passionate about being Jewish? What is it? It's, it's, it's ruach, it's love, it's culture. Food. <laughs> yeah, um, matzo ball soup and um, date nut bread and um, kugel and that makes me feel really Jewish. I feel it's like an emotion like being in love. I just don't know what the words are, but I feel it. I've felt it since birth. I um, was raised by these wonderful Jewish grandparents, Yiddish speaking, and everything about them to me was just love. Um, for me, I think it's the music, and not only because my mommy's a song leader, um, but also the nifty song sessions where we pretty much like go crazy and we all know the lyrics to every Dan Nichols song, and um, it's just a really strong community feeling. How does music bond us as Jews? Like, what, is, what does music mean for us? It's the universal language. Worship, celebrations, sad times, happy times, you know, music is a constant in our lives. The tool, the access point, um, sort of the conduit to an experience. Music is one of the things that brings us together. We all sing together when we're in synagogue. Music can move our souls and point us in the direction of justice and social justice, social action, really moving our hearts toward doing what's right in the world. I'm a big Heschel guy, and um, Heschel says that music is the voice of God. And I think that's really, really true, that you can pray and you can feel connected, but until you let that inner voice come out and the real true voice starts to speak, it's like being stuck in a little container, and, and breaking out of that container is what happens when you sing and when you play and when you share music with your community. We sing because we are commanded to sing, because music reaches deep down into the crevices of our souls and connects us to God. Because music is God's gift that summons our emotions and ties us to our tradition and our past. When I was a teenager, I went to Israel. I lived in Israel as part of high school. And when I saw the sunset in Israel with that special pink reddish color, I remember saying to myself, that is my favorite color for the rest of my life and I only will see this in Israel. So. It looked a little bit like that, so that's a really special picture. How would you describe that connection that we have to Israel? What is it? Like, what is the love? What is it about? Like, how, it's so deep. It's so. How would you describe it? It's really got to come from here, and and for me, I decided to live there, and I was in the army for many years. But when we engage with people, you see that passion. Okay, that we're part of something that isn't just now. It's something that's been 2,000, you know, for you know, 5,000 years uh, and, and, and it's still continuing. We're part of something very, very special. It's not been something that's been easy and it's not something that our history is, has been always something that uh, we were, you know, we're happy about. But it's something that's unique in the world and that we can be proud to be part of it. And we have an opportunity, and this is where I really believe this, and I say this also as a son of a Holocaust survivor, that in our generation, we can make such a difference that we could be part of building a society that's come a long way in 62 years, but has a long way to go. Uh, and uh, be part of building that society uh, and creating a better Jewish society in Israel and also over here. And we can do something about it. What is happening? Some president, there's a president here, right? Somebody, she's a president. No, 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 not me, it's not me. <laughs> president Obama is gonna be here this afternoon. I've never seen excitement like this at a biennial, ever. We come together to enjoy one another, to learn from one another, but to see President Obama is a chance of a lifetime. What do we want him to say? What are we hoping for? You know, a renewed commitment to Israel and what it stands for and what it means, acknowledging what it means to people here in the United States as well. Support for Israel, for Jewish education and all the things that we're interested in, all the political reasons we're here. <laughs> to recognize that Israel is our only ally in the Middle East and the only democracy. High five, it's happening. President Barack Obama is coming. Woo!
We knew from the moment President Obama said he would be with us that it would be an incredible afternoon, but no one could have predicted the excitement, the energy in the House. Everybody loved this moment, and we will remember it, all of us, for years to come. As president, I have never wavered in pursuit of a just and lasting peace. Two states for two peoples, an independent Palestine alongside a secure Jewish state of Israel. I have not wavered and will not waver. That is our shared vision. He's got a real kind of Jewish soul in a strange way. I think he's an amazing human being, one of the most brilliant presidents we've ever had. And the fact that he took the time out of his schedule to come here really meant a lot to all of us and to me personally as well. President Barack Obama, shalom! All right, well, let's have a hug. <laughs> Ma. Ma. Biennial is incredible because it's a spread of incredibly large, huge experiences and small, intimate experiences. So you sort of get the best of both worlds here. We've had fabulous sessions learning about how to be more effective members of our community, how to lead our congregations. Just incredible stuff uh, going on here at the URJ Biennial. It's just a gathering of spirituality, a vibrant, wonderful place to celebrate life. The Jewish people celebrating community, celebrating being part of a big whole. Seeing old friends, hearing brilliant people Making speak. Making new ones. I'm very proud to be a part of the largest Jewish movement in North America. And um, I believe in all the values that, that the reform movement stands for. And I'm just very proud to be here today. I've had an amazing experience the last 24 hours learning about really important topics that are being discussed in Jewish communities all over the country. I think I've met somebody from just about every state in America today. I'm very much looking forward to speaking to more people. This is really exciting. The, the Ruach and the love and the commitment to Jewish community is definitely alive and well. Looking into 2012, I think it's going to be a good year. Thank you so much. It's Mama Donnie here reporting for Shalom TV. Salam Aleinu Le'akol Ha'olam Salam Shalom Salam Aleinu Le'akol Ha'olam Salam Shalom Okay, these guys totally rock. Thank you so much.